what's it like working with Jeffrey Emblem? And how long did it take you to kind of learn, I guess, how to communicate with him? Mm, well, first off, Jeffrey is very, very special. Um, I, sometimes I, don't, I honestly don't think he understands how strong he is. He's a strong kid. Um, I feel like once he starts to understand the game better as far as a whole, because, you know, he's still learning football. Uh, once, uh, once he starts under, uh, understanding the game a whole lot more, then that's when, you know, things start going there. And then just as a follow have you got any fashion tips from him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm leave, I'm, I'll leave that to him. I don't, I don't get into fashion, all that stuff. I'm day 60. I got, I got Crocs on right now, so <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm leave that stuff to him. Brian? Uh, Brian Mackey's Auburn Sports uh, Jason looked like y'all substituted more on defense uh, against Mississippi State. Do you feel like that helped you guys, especially in the second half, to play better and to actually outscore them? Yeah, a lot, a lot of us were uh, fresh the whole game. I felt good. I know a lot of the players felt good. And, I mean, getting as many players in as you can, I mean, it, helped, it helps out a lot, especially for the starters. John, in the back. Hey, Jason. Uh, John Connor, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. Uh, same question I just asked Jacob. Um, as far as, like, a reset button, do you feel – the atmosphere, the energy has changed here since the change took place. And uh, just how excited are you to play for Cadillac at home this Saturday? Oh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for Cadillac. I'm, I'm an honor that he's my interim head coach. And um, I want to go back and also preach on that. Like, I mean, I went through a coaching change when it comes to crystal ball. Um, so it, to me, is, I'm, I'm familiar with it. But yeah, it, and going back on the whole week, yeah, it's hard. But um, what can you do as a player? You have to just put your head down, keep working, and move on. But yeah, I feel a lot of everyone's excited. I'm excited. The team's excited. I'm, I'm ready to work. Just to follow up, if I may, um, obviously, Calera kid coming home to Auburn, obviously, wins and losses wise, it hasn't been fantastic. But just how much have you enjoyed getting to come home and returning? Oh, I love it. I love, man, I'm glad I'm home. First off, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm home. I mean, it's just an hour and 30. Drive straight road, get up on I sixty five from Montgomery straight road to Calera. I mean, I'm happy to be here in Auburn. Tom, uh, Jason, Mark, Marcus was talking about just you can kind of sense the excitement for Saturday's game, just mm-hmm. the fan base kind of rallying around Caddy. Just what do you expect that atmosphere to be like Saturday night? Crazy. I mean, I, I trust in Cadillac. I believe in what he's saying. What he's what he's been saying all week is serve and believe. And I, I truly believe in, in what he's saying, and I'm going to serve each and every one of my with one of my teammates. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for this game. I know the whole uh, state, every, the whole city, excited for this game. Mark, yeah, Mark Murphy inside the Tiger. Just watching that game on your Saturday night, it looked like you guys played hard for four quarters on defense. Didn't have any missed tackles. But just talk about how you guys played. Well, this goes for every game. You just have to execute. You know, if uh, tackling's one thing, we, we tackled a whole lot better than previous games. But if, if we don't execute our plan, then we, then we don't have a chance. But that, again, that's every single game. You got to execute. Was there some satisfaction at how hard you guys played? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, again, like I told you, everyone served and everyone believed. And and I know like this last week was hard for everybody. I understand that, but again, we served, um, and, we, and we believed. So I mean, every everyone, I feel like, had confidence, and we believed not only that we could win, but we believed in each other. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of excitement behind uh, last week, and also going into this week against Texas A&M. Good you mentioned earlier you had dealt with the coaching change with Cristobal. Um, how were you able to relate that experience to what is going on now? Not only just that week, but I guess all the things you were leading up to it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like I said, as players, we can only do so much. I mean, a lot of the news happened when we were in class. I, I didn't know that it happened until one of my friends told me that it happened in class. I was I was on my phone. I was taking notes. He said, "Hey, Mar- I mean, not Mar- but uh, Harson got fired." So, I mean, um, again, we just have to put a head down, keep working. You know, it's, it's it's life. Things like this always happen. Changes always happen. You know that. So, again, as a player, what can you do but just 
keep working, keep on grinding. No. You talk about coming together, playing hard, and uh, but there was a big change of production as well. I mean, got ten tackles for losses. So like, what made you able to produce so well? Get in the backfield, and make plays. Mm-hmm. And again, I, f- I feel like we believed in the game plan. The b- game plan is always simple. Uh, just execute, relentless finish, win the pre-snap, attack, and, and be violent. And that's what we did uh, Saturday. Question, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. No, if you want to. Yeah, we're going to put you over the um, You know, I think I was lost last week the most of the season. Mm-hmm. What do you think a lot of y'all in the backfield that moment? Um, we just came together as a group, and um, we just we we said we're not gonna uh let what happened uh last week affect us as a defense, and we're gonna come out try to play uh hard, and we just came together all week at practice and game time and show up. Nibias, well, Nibias, we'll go to hell. I kind of hope you're doing well, brother. Um, what would you say is the biggest change over the last six seven days for you guys when you find out Harson's gone? Then you find out Cage's the guy. What's what's that process been like? Uh, it really had brought the team together because like we we uh, had a little bit of adversity last week, and we like try to build off adversity and try to push forward. No matter what's going on outside, we try to uh, lock in as a team and play our best. And it just that just showed our leaders. Like our leaders came up and said, "Hey, we still got a game to play this week. No matter the, the, uh, the circumstances going on." So. It's just like we so it's so as our real leaders and who gonna step on the team. Yeah, for all, um how tough is it to see uh what's going on with TJ as far as him taking a break away from the team and everything? Uh it's tough because TJ was a good dude, but like at the same time that's a that's another thing I was talking about adversity, like it's just another piece of adversity going on. So we can either like we're on a uh, play like so we're not gonna quit or lay down. So we just gonna keep playing, and when we when first to come our way, we just like try to come together as a team. Justin, Justin Ferguson, Auburn, Missouri. What stands out to you about Texas A&M and their offensive line as y'all get ready for them this week? Uh, and those like they still has a good they still have a good online. Um, there are a lot of young guys on their online, and we feel like we can uh. Like, test their own line versus our D line. That's a good test against us. Tom? Tom Can you guys kind of sense the excitement that's leading up to this home game and just, you know, how the fans are kind of rallying around uh, Caddy? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like, that's how everybody been talking about these last couple of days, was, uh, coming out to our home game. Uh, that's what all the students been talking about and the fans been talking about. So I, I can't wait to see how uh, Jordan Harris is going to be Saturday. What do you think it's going to be like? I think it's going to be crazy. Like, a big game, like one of the biggest games we had, like Penn State game, crowd wise. Anybody else from Marcus? How important was I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Philip Marshall there. Um, how important was it to um, you guys to win the turnover battle and actually get some turnovers? Uh, that was very important. That's how we uh, talked about every week. Like we got to win the turnover battle to uh, have a chance, and we got to win the turnover battle because like. Uh, that's if you most of the time when you run a turnover battle, you win the game. So like, our defense always had that as a mission to uh, win a turnover battle. You buy us with AL dot com. Obviously, you're in a pretty good mood today. Um, sure. Just walk me through what that what the last six seven days have been like for you and the guys. You know, obviously it's uh, it's been a, a big change for the program, um, but. You know, similar to what some of the other guys have probably said, we we really came together as a team this past week. Um, special teams, obviously, not much has changed with us because we still have Coach Rock here, as well as our analysts and GAs are still the same people. So, um, obviously, Coach Harson was different, but for us, it was uh, same old, same old. We we know the jobs we have to do, and we uh, we have to go out and perform. Tom, Tom Reno, um, uh, what's it like being nominated for the Burlesworth? You know, just just as a walk on to get even that little bit of recognition. You know, it's a, it's a real honor. Um, I, I'm i lucky to be in the position I am today. You know, walking on it back in 2018 here at Auburn, um, there's a group of older guys that really led this team strong. Um, you know, 2018, 2019, having those guys uh, like Bill Taylor here as a snapper before me, uh, getting to spend a lot of time with Anders, with uh, Sage Ledbetter, who's a former kicker, with Clark Smith, who's a former long snapper. They really taught me um, how to come in and uh, – 
and work the way Auburn's supposed to work, how to how to perform, how to um, put in the hard work each and every day, and um, how to get yourself prepared each week for a game. And you know, it's a, it's an honor to be to be uh, nominated for this award and um, kind of sh- seeing where all that hard work is starting to pay off. Brian Stoltz. Brian Stoltz, Auburn Rivals. Uh, how do you get into something so specific as becoming a long snapper? Uh, I actually started long snapping back in seventh grade. I was. Uh, I was a center in middle school, and our coach was just like, hey, you know, you snap with one hand already. Let's just throw a second hand on there and throw it 10 yards further. So go from 5 to 15 yards. And um, I really coached Mark Seaving and uh, back at Dolphin High School or Dolphin Junior High School in Enterprise, Alabama, um, really got me into it as well as uh, many other people along the way. Um, went to many camps coming through high school from Coles. Cole skin camps and all their instructors to to honestly a lot of hours in the backyard working on it um, coming up to Auburn getting work in college camps you know being uh, competitive with different guys that are now in the SEC um, all those guys are excellent long snappers and really putting myself up against those guys made me uh, who I am today and uh, you know I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't trade those long hours arguing with my dad about techniques in the backyard for anything. Um, but yeah, it started at a young age and just, I kind of built upon it and realized, you know, I might not be the most athletic guy on the team, but hey, I am the best at throwing a ball between my legs 15 yards. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm Johnny Cotton, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. Um, just the atmosphere around the building, around campus, do you feel like a reset button was really hit uh, since the change? And uh, just to you personally, what has Cadillac meant to you over the years, not just as the interim head coach, but just being around the program as a coach, as a mentor for you these last few years? You know, I don't know about a reset button, but you can feel the buzz um, from classmates to in the building here. Everybody um, everybody is excited to play for Cadillac. We, It's impossible not to love the guy. Uh, we, he's, he's a guy that he speaks from the heart every time he gets in front of the team, and um, it's somebody we want to we wanna fight for each and every day. And uh, Cadillac is somebody who I grew up watching play. I'm from Enterprise, Alabama, small town. Um, you know, having a 24 jersey and uh, watching him and Ronnie back when I was, you know, four or five years old. Uh, it's uh, it's awesome to play for this guy now, and um, you know, seeing his career develop, and you know, kind of hearing from when he was a high school coach down at IMG to Birmingham Iron to here at Auburn. Um, we love playing for Cadillac, and um, it's uh, it's kind of a blessing for me to see one of my heroes growing up as one of my coaches now. Justin, Justin Ferguson, Auburn, Missouri. Cam, first quarter, y'all had hardly any rushing success. Last three quarters, y'all were moving ball on the ground. What changed for y'all, especially up front, to kind of get the game? Uh, I know Mississippi State does a lot of different stuff with uh, with movement and stuff, so. Um, Getting used to that probably, but just really just continuing to work, man, and just uh, coming in after halftime. We did a really good job, so just keep pushing, keep working, serving each other. That was the main thing. Nathan? Okay. Nathan King, Auburn under cover. Some, some bigger shoes for, for Coach Brand this weekend, taking on the, the play calling. How do you feel like he did it, and, and how much did y'all enjoy having Coach Bernard at Oakdale? Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, uh, coach Friend, I, I mean, that's, opp- that's a big opportunity for, for every coach getting to step up and, and do the play call. And I think he did a really good job. We, uh, we had one of our better offensive games. So um, I think he did a really good job having Coach Bernardi and Coach Simmons in there with us, uh, coaching us. As Coach Simmons has been here since I've been here. So having him in there in the room was, was comfortable and some we're pretty used to. So that was good. They both did a really good job. No. Hey, Jim, no, 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 no. With y'all running twice so much in the three last week, do you think that kind of plays more to your strengths on the offensive line? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I think we've got a veteran group on the offensive line. So, and I mean, we've got two, probably three first round backs in the backfield. So I think uh, that's that's something that we, we, sh- we should do is run the ball a lot. And I enjoyed it. I know the backs enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, it's cool with us. Mark? Mark Murphy, Inside Auburn Tigers. Looks like you guys played with what, a little mission Saturday night. Did you feel that? Uh, you said a little mission. Like you guys played with a little mission. Oh uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, well, I know the team really came together. It's it's been a tough week, so uh, just coming together and playing for each other, man. Some coach Cadillac talked about all week was serving each other. So I think we did that. We we fought really hard and, and played for each other, and I think that showed up, even though we didn't get the other results we really wanted. So what do you guys need to do to take the next step as an offense, be more consistent for a whole game? Mm-hmm. Uh, just continue to get better and focus on those things. Um, focus on coming out strong, being consistent, and those things happen during practice. So. During practice, we got to work on those things. Justin, uh, early on, what stands out to you about Texas A&M and their defense, and kind of what, mm-hmm. what you are going to be prepped for this week? Oh uh, well, they've got a really good D line to start, so uh, I think I mean it's going to be on the O line to, to have a really good week, and that starts in practice preparation, and uh, we'll get started on that today, getting better, and just continue to continue to work. Brian, did you have something? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. Um, first first uh, play of the game, you're lined up in I formation, did a little toss. Mm-hmm. Um, you got behind 21 points, still continue to run the ball. What does that say about Cadillac and the way he wants to run things on offense? Um, I think it's just a, the physicality, that, that Auburn mindset, man. We work hard work. and uh, we, Auburn's been known for a physical run game, and so I think that's something we need to we need to stand on is running the ball. So uh, I know he believes that. Coach Friend believes that. So. Um, I think that shows up in the in the play calling. What does that mean to you as an offensive line? Uh, I like that a lot. I mean, we want to be the foundation of the team. We want to be the ones that are being relied on. So uh, we've got some a veteran group, and uh, we 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 want to take on that challenge. We want that. So we we yeah. Richard, uh, Richard Soto, the Montgomery advertiser. You know, Texas A&M. You just look at the raw numbers. They give up a lot of yards on the ground. That's something you guys look at. And you you know look forward to. You're excited because you think that you could. That, um, I mean, I think our plan is going to be to run the ball just like, I mean, just like we did last week. We're going to have a balanced offense, do all those things. But, um, I mean, week to week, just just the same thing. It's pretty much the same thing I had, uh, said about that question. Just we want to be a physical run game. We want to have a physical downhill run game. So we're going to try to run the ball. Mark, after everything Trox has been through, come back and play. What's your feeling about it? Man, that was that was tough, man. Um, I saw it happen on the field, and I was hoping it, it wasn't going to be as bad as it was. And when he came off the sideline, man, I, I, me and a couple other guys, we we're we're fighting back tears over there. It's it's tough because I don't think there's anybody in this in this facility that's put more into the program than Trox has. Uh, he's been here a long time, and uh, it hurts. But we're going to keep playing for him, keep fighting for him, and uh, that'll be something that we'll have in our heads the rest of the season. Uh, Christian Clemente, uh, Auburn 247. Cam, with just kind of all the fan support around Cadillac right now, what do you expect of the atmosphere to be on Saturday? It, it's going to be jumping. I know uh, talking with a bunch of the players, uh, we're all excited about it because we know the fans are going to show up, and uh, they're excited about Cadillac, and we are too. So uh, we're going to show up and, and play for him, and I know the fans will show up, and they'll be cheering them, cheering them on. So. The last one over here on the right. Cam? Yeah. Goodbye, smoothboyhound.com. I hope you're doing well today, brother. Um, how difficult is it as a line when you have those bells over and over again? Does that make it one of the tougher environments to play in? Yeah, uh, especially when you get down there towards that, that student section. It's it's pretty loud. I know um, the first time I actually saw Auburn play was it, I was a recruit at Mississippi State. So uh, those bells are they're they're there. They're pretty loud. So when uh, that that far end zone is one of the it gets pretty loud down there. It's definitely a little hard to hear. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.